Hey everybody, it's the History Teacher. In this episode, we'll examine the rise of Islam. The word Islam means submission. The term Muslim means one who submits. Muhammad, known to Muslims as the Prophet, was born in the city of Mecca in modern Saudi Arabia in AD 570. While in his early 20s, Muhammad began working for his distant cousin, a woman named Khadija, who was a wealthy merchant in Mecca. She and Muhammad would marry in the year 595. She was almost 40 and he was 25. Their marriage was happy and fruitful. They had four daughters and two sons, although the sons died as infants. During this period, Mecca became a wealthy trading center, controlled mostly by elite clan leaders. The materialism and religious idolatry that Muhammad witnessed bothered him. He began to seek solace in quiet caves where he would meditate and fast. On one of these occasions, around the year 610, when Muhammad was 40, he experienced a life-changing event. According to tradition, Muhammad was visited by the angel Gabriel, who instructed him to recite the words that eventually form the Quran, or Holy Book of Islam. More such experiences followed. Muhammad was so affected by these experiences that, for years, he didn't tell anyone else about them except for his family. Eventually, Muhammad shared with his tribe the messages he was receiving. Over the following decade, Muhammad and his followers were criticized and later attacked for straying from traditional Meccan beliefs and customs. In 622, after an attempt to assassinate him, Muhammad and several hundred followers left Mecca and traveled to the city of Yathrib, later called Medina. The leaders of Medina invited Muhammad there, hoping that he could help to resolve a brutal conflict among the tribes there, which he did. During his six years in Medina, Muhammad gained more followers and fostered the development of the first Muslim community. The Meccans, who had run Muhammad out of town, were irritated by Muhammad's success in Medina. They tried to crush his new religious movement in three battles fought from 624 through 627, but failed to do so. A treaty in 628 guaranteeing Muslims safety throughout Arabia was violated a year later by allies of Mecca, and hostilities resumed. But by this point, Muhammad and the Muslims had grown enormously and were now stronger than their opponents. In the year 630, the Muslims marched toward Mecca and, instead of facing resistance, were peacefully joined by the tribes they encountered. Muhammad, who had been forced to flee Mecca less than a decade before, now re-entered the city in triumph and without bloodshed. The Muslim code of law and theology is called Sharia. Among other things, it includes the so-called five pillars of faith that all Muslims must observe. First is the profession of faith, that there is but one God and Muhammad is his prophet. Second is that the faithful must pray five times a day and to face the direction of Mecca while doing so. Third is to perform acts of charity. Fourth is to fast from sunrise to sunset during the holy month of Ramadan. Fifth is to make a hajj or pilgrimage to Mecca if possible. The Quran, which consists of 114 shuras or verses, contains Muhammad's teachings as received in his visions. Muslims believe that the words of the Quran are the words of God, or Allah as God is known to Muslims. Mullahs, or religious teachers, occupy positions of authority, but Islam did not develop a hierarchical system comparable to that of Christianity, meaning, for example, there are not Muslim bishops or a Muslim pope or patriarch. A leadership struggle ensued after Muhammad's death in 632. His father-in-law, Abu Bakr, became the caliph or successor to Muhammad. Abu Bakr governed for two years until his death in 634. Omar succeeded him as the new caliph. Between 634 and 642, Omar established the Islamic Empire. Khalid ibn al-Walid, called the Sword of Islam, defeated the Byzantines, attaining Jerusalem in 637. His forces then defeated the Persians in 643. He also claimed Egypt and much of North Africa. The Umayyad caliphs, based in Damascus and modern Syria, governed from 661 to 750. They called themselves Shiites and believed that they were Muhammad's true successors. Most Muslims were Sunnis, from the word Sunnah, referring to oral traditions about the Prophet. They conquered Spain by the year 730 and advanced into France until they were stopped by Charles Martel in 732 at the Battle of Tours. Muslim armies penetrated India and China, Kazakhstan, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Bangladesh, among other Asian countries, are predominantly Muslim due to this early Muslim expansion. And some of the oldest mosques in the world are in China. Muslims transformed their capital, Damascus, into a cultural center. They were exposed to Hellenistic, that is, Greek culture, from the nearby Byzantine Empire. The Abbasid Caliphs ruled from 750 to 1258. They moved the capital to Baghdad and treated Arab and non-Arab Muslims as equals. This period is referred to as the Islamic Golden Age because art, learning, and culture flourished in the Muslim world. The life of one of the early rulers of this era, Caliph Harun al-Rashid, 
who reigned from 789 to 809, is known from a collection of stories called The Thousand and One Arabian Nights. This work was a compilation of Arab and Indian folk tales which had a lasting impact and which greatly influenced both Islamic and European culture. Ninth century Caliph al Maman was a great patron of the arts and sciences. In the late 10th century, the empire began to disintegrate. In 1055, the Seljuk Turks, who were also Muslims, captured Baghdad, but permitted the Abbasids to rule as figureheads. Genghis Khan, ruler of a nomadic Asian people called the Mongols, invaded Abbasid territory in the early 1200s. In 1258, the Mongols seized Baghdad and murdered the last caliph. The prosperous Muslim society was built on commerce and industry. Arab merchants controlled the trade routes linking Asia, Africa, and Europe. Frequent dealings with non-Muslims encouraged tolerance. Non-Muslims were permitted to freely practice their religion in return for paying a tax. The Arabs further developed the Indian numeral system, for example the numbers on your phone or your keyboard, which most of the world uses today. Muslims also laid the foundations for modern mathematics. The word algebra originates in Arabic. The poet Omar Khayyam, who wrote a collection of poetry called the Rubiyat, also pioneered the field of analytic geometry. Arab scientists also advanced in astronomy, optics, and geography. Their greatest contribution was in medicine, and they founded hospitals throughout the world. They were especially skilled in diseases of the eye and in eye surgery. Arab philosophers carried on the traditions of Aristotle and Plato after knowledge of those philosophers' works had disappeared in Europe. Medieval Europeans discovered the ideas of ancient Greeks and Romans from the Muslim world, who had been studying them for centuries. Averroes, who lived from 1126 to 1198, wrote a commentary on Aristotle's work that served as a guide for Western scholars. Muslims have been historically opposed to visual representations of Muhammad. Instead of depicting religious figures, which is common in Christian art, Islamic art consists of intricate geometric designs and often includes verses from the Quran. Muslim architecture employed horseshoe arches, twisted columns, bulbous domes, and minarets. Islam, which began as one man's revelation in a cave 1400 years ago, developed into a thriving medieval civilization in the Middle East and has become the fastest growing religion in the world today. Alright, that does it for now. Thank you for watching and see you next time.